Good day. This is Bennett, also known as Jeremiah. Today we're going to talk about how to conquer finals, how to ace finals. So I'm going to give you a strange method that is not spoken about, It's going, but it's a method that works, right? So not only is it going to help you in this finals, it's going to help you wherever you go, generally in academics. So before we start with that method, let's talk about my background story, right? So first I want you to know that I once got zero in maths. And when I say zero in maths, I'm not talking about writing a test and getting the result zero. No, I'm actually talking about a term mark, a term mark of zero in maths, literally on the report, right? So, I was actually pushed from grade 11 to grade 12 on the basis that I would change pure maths and physics. So, I was spoken to by two teachers and, and a deputy principal all telling me to change from pure maths to maths literacy. They even called my father, you know, they said I was pushed, I, was, I didn't pass, so I was pushed on the basis that I would change pure maths and physics, right? Uh, they even told my father to write a certain letter and that letter they kept it for proof, right? So, um, I actually refused even though I was convinced by two teachers and one deputy principal uh, because in my heart I was telling myself that the Holy Spirit never told me anything about maths literacy. The Holy Spirit never said that, right? The Holy Spirit never said I must do maths literacy. So I refused on the face of two teachers and a deputy principal. So when I refused, that's when my father had to write a letter and they kept it for proof that if I fail, it was not their fault. So I got inspired by a certain person, right? This was one of my leaders in the ministry, right? So this person was getting 9900, 9900, right? So this person was applying the word of God in academics. This person, by the way, finished top in the University of Johannesburg, and this person had 18 distinctions in one year. So I was inspired by this person. This person pushed me. So most of the methods that I got, I actually got it from him, right? So, uh, for instance, um, he would study, and whenever he gets tired, the Holy Spirit takes over. That's what he would say, right? So I also did that. So I trusted the Holy Spirit. I studied. I said, and when I get tired, the Holy Spirit will take over. I continue study. So uh, continue studying. So I could study the whole day without taking a break, of course, except for this eating and stuff, right? But apart from that, I would literally study the whole day. And my marks improved just to show proof that I actually observed everything that I studied. So this method that I'm going to give you is so that you can also get the intelligence that shines, not just this normal intelligence of the average intelligent person. I'm talking about the intelligence that makes you shine, right? That literally can make you famous, right? This is a method that works. It worked for me big time, from zero in maths to now doing a bachelor's of science in mathematics and statistics and getting 100, right? So let's talk about the method, right? So before um, we talk about the method, the method has to be applicable to you, right? So, what am I trying to say? Um, for instance, the Bible says that uh, we've got the mind of Christ, right? That's what it says. But this is applicable to those ones who have accepted Christ as Lord, right? So, you might have been going to church for years and stuff like that, right? But you might not have accepted Christ as Lord. Yes, we all know that Jesus is Lord, but have you personally accepted Christ as Lord? Have you said He's the Lord of your life? So before I go to this exact method, I want to make sure that they're applicable to you, right? So if you haven't accepted Christ, even if you feel like you don't really believe, but as long as there is a small part of you that believes, if you respond to that part, automatically you become a child of God, right? So I want to make sure that this method is applicable to you, right? So how do you become a child of God? How do you become part of the family of Christ? How do you become part of the kingdom? So the Bible actually says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved, right? So all that is required for you is that you have to believe that Jesus died and he rose again physically, that is in the throne of God, right? And you have to confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, so you have to accept his lordship of your life, you have to accept that he's your Lord, you have to confess him as your boss, your master, right? So that is what is required. So for you to accept Jesus as your Lord and to believe that he died and he rose again, then you're part of the family, literally, right? So in this prayer, I'm going to lead you into this prayer whereby you accept Jesus as Lord over your life, right? After here, you are going to be a child of God, right? So if you have never accepted Jesus as Lord, this is going to be your opportunity, right? So after here, you automatically become a child of God. Then the method applies to you, right? So repeat this prayer after me. Make sure you mean it from your heart, right? So say, Father... I come to you in the name of Jesus. Your word says, if I call on the name of the Lord, I'll be saved. I ask Jesus to come in my heart and be the Lord over my life. I believe he died for me. 
and I believe. He rose again. I confess with my mouth, Jesus is Lord over my life. He is my master. He is my boss. I am a child of God. I am born again. My sins are washed away. It is done. So, just by repeating this, this prayer, just by accepting Jesus as Lord over your life and believing in your heart, you are automatically saved, automatically, uh, automatically a child of God, right? So now, this method becomes applicable to you. So maybe you have done it before. Maybe you said, now, nah, remember, I did this in church. As long as you remember that you accepted Jesus as Lord, then you are, you are done. You are saved, right? So whether you got saved now or you have gotten saved before, maybe at church, right? Great. So then the method becomes applicable to you, right? So I'm going to give you two methods, right? I believe I'm going to give some bonus methods, right? So, but these two methods are sufficient, right? They will work for you, whether in this finals or in the next finals or wherever you go in academics, right? So, let's talk about the method. So, number one, the Bible says you have got the mind of Christ, right? So, as long as you are a child of God, the wisdom of Christ is already there. Another scripture says Christ has been made unto us wisdom. So, you have to trust in Christ that he is your wisdom. So, there is such a thing as supernatural backup in academics. This thing is serious, right? As long as your child, your child of God is actually your right, you have to be supernaturally backed up, right? Like literally supernatural backed up. Uh, backed up. So, the wisdom is already there. So, now what you have to do is that in prayer, you can speak to your mind, right? You can speak intelligent, speak whatever you want to see, right? For instance, I get distinctions. I understand faster. Literally, you speak to your mind, right? And when you speak, it moves from the spiritual to the physical. So, your IQ can literally increase. Your IQ can physically change, right? You'll be shocked that you, you, you now understand faster. You now learn faster, right? So, this is now divine enablement by God. There is such a thing as the spirit of understanding. That's one of the attributes of the Holy Spirit. There is such a thing as the spirit of understanding, right? So, this is method number one, where you speak to your brain, you speak the things that you want to see, right? And the things that Christ has already given you will manifest from the spiritual to the physical, right? Then you'll be shocked that as time goes on, you're now learning faster. You, you'll be shocked when everything becomes uh, beyond what you're expecting. Now you become a leader in the class. Now you become this super intelligent person, right? Mm -hmm. And who knows, you might be the next Nobel Prize winner, right? So, this is method number one, right? So now let's talk about method number two. So method number two, you reap what you sow, right? Galatians 6 verse 7 says you reap what you sow. So whatever you put in is your exact results. So in other words, you have to look at your studying as your marks. Look at your studying and say, is this the mark that I want to get? So your study is a direct reflection of your marks, right? So you look at your study as your marks. So what I want you to do is find the best method that works for you. Maybe you learn easily via videos or maybe you learn easily via reading that method that you see that you learn easily i want you to utilize it uh, you utilize it so the the work that you put in is the exact mark you get right so you reap what you sow but combine it with method one so that you can be supernaturally backed up there is an advantage of being backed up there is a group of uh, there is this there were these intelligent people that went to a pastor and they say what must i do to pass the pastor said let me pray for you and they literally laughed and left I get it. They're saying that you have to study to pass. Yes, true, right? So you can study to pass as normal. But what they miss is that, who knows, what if their IQ could have been improved, right? What if they were going to be supernaturally backed up by the Holy Spirit? When you're supernaturally backed up, you will pass more than you were supposed to. That's the thing, right? So this thing is very serious, right? You can be backed up by the Holy Spirit. And this applies as long as you're a child of God, literally, right? So that's what they missed. So combine it with the first method. As long as you are a child of God, the wisdom is already there. Speak to your brain. It moves from the spiritual to the physical. Right? Let's talk about some of the things that I would, I would, uh, I would do. So this guy that inspired me uh, gave me two methods. Right? He said that method number one, you utilize every time you have. Literally. While these others are going to parties, you are studying. While these people are doing this, you are studying. Right? That method is good. Right? Especially if you are towards your finals, you have to do that. Right? But... Um, I don't really like the method. I'll explain why. For instance, some of us, not all of us are called to be these super nerds and stuff, right? Some of us are business people, right? So we can't spend all our time studying. So what you have to do is to be ordered, right? You have a timetable and stuff, right? So that's what I would do. But now I would be structured to this point. I would, uh, let's say I, I want to finish all my 
subject in three months, right? So I look at each textbook, for instance, let's say this textbook has 300 pages. So I will look at my timetable. How many times does this subject appear in three months? So let's just say it appears in appears 60 times, just an example, not realistic. But or let's just say it appears 20 times, right? So if the subject appears 20 times, I'll say, okay, fine, 300 divided by 20. Then I know how many pages I have to read a day. Then in three months, I'll be done with the whole book, right? So that's how it is. So you just you just create the timetable, and then you, you decide the period that you want to finish, right? So then um, you find out um, how many times does that subject appear in that period. Then you divide the number of pages by the days, then you know exactly how many pages you must read a day. Right? So this needs you to be disciplined, right? So then there would not be pressure. You will not be pressured, you will not be pressured, you will not be worried about your studies because you know that when you follow this exactly in that period of time, you will be done in every subject, literally. That's the advantage, right? So that's, that's one of the things that I would do. So this is applicable, um, this is, is what is applicable rather than utilizing every time, right? And then number two, he said plan ahead of time. That's the strategy I like, plan ahead of time. So for instance, if you're going to university next year, you can actually study, as provided that you know exactly what you're going to study, right? Then you can actually get materials and you can study, um, you can study the whole year's thing, right? Or maybe half of the year's thing. You can study, you can be ahead before you get there, right? But what I would do personally is that I would study on December, January, and February, right? So university opens on February in South Africa, right? So I would study in uh, I'll study on December, January, February, and then uh, uh, literally I would finish the whole year's things by then. Then while this university opens, I'm already done with the whole year stuff. So I'm no more studying. I can just revise there and there, but I'm literally done with the whole year stuff. So that's, that's what I would do. So planning ahead of time because I don't like being on the same pace with other students, literally. So that's what you can do, right? So plan ahead of time. That's what you can do. So. This will be it for this video, so I'm going to make more videos about um, other things, right? So if you have accepted Jesus as Lord, just comment Amen. This is not so uh, because of fame and stuff. I do uh, make uh, videos, right? That's where I accept, right? For fame and stuff, I'll say subscribe and all this, right? But this is so that I know how many people got saved, right? Those who did the salvation prayer, right? All right, so um, to those who watched until now, I want to thank you guys. I'll see you in the next video. God bless you.